begin the season of Advent with a call to stay away, to open our hearts, and to return to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have entered into Advent. It's our new year for us as Catholics, as people of faith. This new uh, looking forward to the arrival of Jesus at Christmas. And so uh, in the Advent of our lives here now to be anticipating and watchful as we hear in the Gospel. As we begin our season, we'll uh, decorate our Advent uh, wreath here with the lighting of our candles. We ask God's blessing upon the wreath. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles in the, of this wreath, May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yes, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the son of man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, let us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the son of man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will know more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony of to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end. Irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. We've uh, entered now into Advent, different part of the, the year for us, uh, a different kind of message. This is uh, one of those seasons, just like Lent, it's a bit of a penitential season, meaning that it's a calling forth out of us uh, a deeper relationship with Jesus. It's a time for us to really reflect on where am I at in my relationship with God. There are uh, three parts here, or three different images that uh, we can find in the book of Isaiah, which, uh, just to kind of listen to them and see, you know, is the Lord at all in your heart uh, doing any of this? Is he stirring up anything with these images as a kind of preparation for his arrival at Christmas time? Now, um, I'll preface this by just giving the idea here of, you notice how our culture that we live in the American culture, as soon as Thanksgiving Day was done, or maybe even it was all the way back on Halloween, I know it was when I walked through Menards, it was uh, already, well, as soon as Halloween was over, it's like Christmas decorations. <laughs> and for sure after Thanksgiving, right? Black Friday sales hit and then suddenly it's like, everything is in anticipation of Christmas. Uh, but it's different than the kind of anticipation that you and I have. They want to celebrate Christmas right now. Get everything out and just be all Christmas all the time, all the way until Christmas Day, and then it's gone. And then we're already at, at uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Valentine's Day. Yes, thank you very much. It's a meaningless holiday to be. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> all right, anyway. So, um, so Christmas, right? Uh, the danger here is that we would just skip Advent. That we would not have in our hearts a need for a Savior. Isn't that what we celebrate at Christmas time? We celebrate that God enters into our existence to save us. We're not just doing, hey, happy birthday, Jesus. Well, that was fun. Let's do it again next year. That's not the purpose of Christmas. It's not his birthday party. The purpose of Christmas is the arrival of our salvation, my personal salvation and our collective salvation. And it should mean something to you and I. And so we have to kind of dig deep and ask ourselves, is it just something that I think about up here or has it actually made the longest travel down to the place here in my heart? where I long for Christ as Savior in my life. I need Him. Okay, so here are some of the examples that you see in Isaiah. He says, Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways? Why do you let us wander from your ways, O Lord? Wandering. It gives us this idea of being on a pathway and that we've, we've steered off the path of where we should be. Now, for most of us, uh, we now live with a smartphone in our pocket. And so it, as soon as we travel anywhere, we just type in the info in our GPS and we're good to go, right? <laughs> but I have grown up in a time period and most everybody in this room that are the, uh, above the age of me would be 
people would have grown up without a GPS immediately available to us, and just, you know, we have to go visit relatives down in the Twin Cities, and they've moved to a different location than we remember from when we were growing up. And so what do you do? You have on a piece of paper some general guidelines of how to get there to their house. And if you're driving by yourself like I would have been in high school and in college age time period, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to get down there. And if you miss your exit in the downtown Twin Cities, I mean, and you get the next one and you're trying to find your way and all that, ah, when you get lost, I get panicky. I get, I start sweating like crazy. I, I just like every little thing gets on my nerves. Every, I can't see the street signs because I have everything. I want to get there so fast that I'm driving fast, <laughs> faster than I should be. And I'm just, you get panicky when you're lost. My, er, one of my earliest memories of childhood was being in the supermarket and then my mom, of course, saying, stay close. You don't want to get lost. <laughs> and then I, me having an emotional breakdown going, mommy, mommy. The mom is just like an aisle away, but like every aisle I look down, I can't see her. And I'm just, yeah, yeah. it's like a red owl. I mean, it wasn't that huge of a location at the time period. But still, uh, being lost, it's no fun. And that's what sin does to us, doesn't it? When we wander from God and we feel distant. Is that where we're at right now at all? Is, are any of us feeling a wandering, just kind of been living out our secular life and we kind of just want to get to Christmas? Uh, I just want the next happy thing in my life. I need God. I need God. And so this movement in my mind from just simply, oh yeah, it's Christmas coming up to, no, I, I need God as a savior in my life from the wandering that I do. I need Lord, the Lord to bring me back on track and to help me, again, to really remember his way of living life and the anticipation of divine life in heaven. Okay, so that's the first image. The second image, let's see here. Why do you let us... Harden our hearts so that we fear you not. Harden our hearts so that we fear you not. One of the things that can happen with us in the spiritual life is that we would just sort of be like uh, hardened clay. Have you ever played with Play-Doh that's really dried out? Yeah? What happens to it? You start moving it around, move around the Play-Doh, and what happens with the Play-Doh? It just breaks apart and falls into pieces, doesn't it? It's really hard to work with. It's not all nice and soft and moving around. And you can put it in different shapes and everything else. And this would be, when it comes to this, the, our hearts and our relationship with God, have I hardened my heart at all to the Lord through my sins? Or I, it just... I really don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. I don't, I don't want to be moved and changed. And so we harden ourselves off to a Lord who really wants our hearts to be soft and movable, malleable, where he can teach us different ways of living and thinking and being kind to this person in a way that we didn't want to or being more patient or whatever it is, right? We talked about those virtues last week. This malleability, this movement of, of the heart. And is that where I'm at at all in my spiritual life? Where I've just kind of blocked God out. It's not so much that I've wandered away. It's just, you know what, I, no thanks, God. Not really interested right now. It's so hard in my heart. So I need God's grace. I, I just, I can't do it on my own. Uh, one of the things about the 12-step method, if you've ever uh, participated in yourself or maybe uh, through Al-Anon or um, uh, as a family member of someone who's gone through the 12-step process, you know that there's this stage that a, a person who is an addict, they have to get to this moment where they would say, I need help. I can't do this on my own. And if you haven't made it to that stage, nothing's going to help. Because I can do it myself. There's no need for a savior. There's no need for an outside person to step in to change anything. And so as Christians, as, as 
people of faith, we have to come to a recognition at some point in our life and to try to make it stick that I can't do this. I cannot live this life right without God's help. I can try all I want. I can fight with my own will all I want. But in the end, I cannot save myself. And I need that outside assistance. And so that to, to surrender ourselves over to the higher power and the 12-step method for us as Catholics is to surrender over to God and to allow his grace to enter in to perfect my nature. God takes who we are and he raises it up and makes it better. He transforms us with his grace. So this is why we say we need grace. So is my heart hardened at all so that I do not fear God? A third image uh, that we can look at. Behold, Lord, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us will become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. And our guilt carries us away like the wind. I know it's kind of weird to think about God being angry with us. I think a lot of us have uh, grown up with an image of God as just always being nice and gentle and loving and all of that. And so when we start thinking of anger, we get the wrong idea in our heads and we sort of think of uh, somebody in our life who was unfair and just yelled and screamed at us and was abusive or, or they were harmful or whatever, however it was that they were speaking to us. And that's, that's not the anger of God that we're talking about. There are different kinds of anger. And when we think of God, we have to think more of a God just like a, a, a good parent or a friend or a loved one who is willing to stand up against us and say, hey, look, like what you're doing right now, don't do it. Don't, don't run in the street. Don't. And in anger it becomes this, this response to, no, 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 let's get this fixed. That God would care about me so much as to speak up and want my good and be willing to step in and shake me up a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know how many times in my life I've had good people in my life, family members, friends, who will just step in and go, what are you doing? <laughs> What's your behavior pattern right now? And I've got a couple of stories, but they're not really fit for all the kids in the room, so I'm not going to. Say it out loud. But you get the, all the parents in the room, you understand the ideas, right? But some serious things happen in our life, and just somebody to shake you up and go, your behavior pattern is not good. To think of God as looking at my sins and caring so much as he would rush in and want to shake me up. And I already know that when I think of the things that I've done wrong, I'm already angry at myself. So I understand anger. I'm upset at the choices that I've made. I uh, feel bad about it. I feel guilty. I feel ashamed of my person when I do things that are wrong. To see that that can be a blessing from God. That that's God's way of saying, let's get things better. And when the Lord can speak to that part of our hearts, when we allow the Lord in to speak and um, to allow him to have that sense of holy anger toward us, you can see then that this is, this is part of the openness to God, the advent, the waiting for Christ my Savior. God, I, I, I want it to be the case that I actually care about this stuff. Because we know how it is. We can block out what people think. We can block out what God thinks and even ourselves. We can live in a denial and I just don't need to change any of this behavior. I just be myself and do whatever I want and leave me alone. Don't tell me what to do. And people can be as angry as they want. I don't care. Do I want that kind of a relationship with God where I'm telling him I don't care what you think? Just leave me alone. No, I, I don't want that. So, again, I, I need that feeling. I, I need that sense of an interior place of God... I do want you in my life. So you can see how Jesus then, when he speaks in the gospel about being watchful for the arrival of uh, the master of the house who's gone on a journey and is about to come back.
back to visit us. This is a, a, a metaphor for us of God's arrival back into our lives at, at Christmas. He created the world, and now he's about to enter into it in the person of Jesus to help change our lives. And so am I an Advent person? Am I a person in waiting for God's full arrival into my life so that one day there'll be heaven, one day there'll be this healing of all of these things of my life, the forgiveness of my sins, and the full life in heaven that he has in store for me? Am I an Advent person who's willing to allow the Lord into my life? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our needs and our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Father, you have sent us your Son, Jesus. At Christmas, we celebrate his arrival into our lives as Savior from our sins and from our death. Help us to appreciate this in our lives and to always be ready to welcome you in however you wish to be present to us. We ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you have granted, what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below. Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of our human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in, in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, as you are uh, here at church today, um, a couple different things for Advent and getting yourselves uh, in that spirit of uh, readiness for Jesus at Christmas. We have um, a couple of uh, gifts that are in the back of the church here um, that you can read along with us during the month of uh, December, toward, leading up towards Christmas itself. This is our Christmas gift to all parishioners at all three of our parishes this year. It's this book by Matthew Kelly called, I Heard God Laugh. Ha ha ha. I Heard God Laugh. Okay, it's a nice little book. Look at how thin it is. Mm and easy to read for all of us that are like don't like big thick books um, so it's a nice uh, easy to read book it's a, it's a great book and uh, read it yourself and then give it away if you feel like you want to do that last year we gave out joy to the world by uh, Scott Hahn and so we've got copies of those here as well if you want to pick up one of those in the back if you uh, did not get one last year and then um, during Advent itself as we're going through the days of Advent starting on December 1st so just a couple of days away, we will be having a video series of a chapter of Luke's Gospel every day, all 24 chapters, leading all the way up to uh, Christmas itself. If you'd like to watch that and pray along with us, just check out our Facebook page, check out our website, uh, check out uh, however we get it out there, social media-wise, okay, to be able to follow along. I know somebody might be reading the very first chapter of the gospel, okay? So you might want to check out and see how, if it's worth your time and energy. And then we've got a whole bunch of other people who are taking their turns and um, reading a chapter at a time, okay? So you can read along with us and, and pray through the gospel of Luke during the Advent period that way as well. Uh, I've added times to the calendar, uh, public calendar that we've got on our website related for confessions. So if you would like to be able to go to confession during the Advent period prior to Christmas. Remember now that with um, the COVID time period, it's a little harder for me to get priests around to help me out, so to spread it out is helpful rather than piling it on the last couple of weeks and making it harder for yourself to wait and harder for me to get through it too. So um, we've got confessions on, on Thursday nights here, uh, 6 to 7 p.m. down in the basement of the church while adoration is going on upstairs. I've added Tuesday nights over at St. Anne's from 6.30 until 8 o'clock on Tuesday nights. And then we've also got confessions going on at Bluffton before the 5 o'clock Mass on Saturday night from 3.30 until 5, okay? So um, a couple of uh, blocks of time throughout the week, and that'll be all through the Advent season, and I'll probably add some more confession times to make that available for us. All right? Whew. Good. Go to confession. Oh, not just you in person. Sorry, not in particular. There are all of us. <laughs> anyway, you, you know I'm just teasing you, right? Okay, good. Whew. Give the poor kid a complex for the rest of your life. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.